Hmm. I guess we'll start with this. What up guys, the Fighting Therapist here and for today's video, I got you guys a part three. <laughs> I said there was two parts to the other video, but there's actually gonna be a part three because I did get a few comments back because if you follow me on Instagram, I do post some videos before as well in my email list, which is the first link down below um, for my newsletter as well as my website. I do post articles and uh, emails in the newsletter roughly two to three times a week with helpful information and a lot of people did ask Hey Zach, I'm having trouble just activating my core, my TVA, being able to just contract it. I don't know how. So for today's video and just a chain of scenery, since you guys have seen me in this place a roughly amount of times, I decided to take a chair with a beautiful world, you know? Before we start the video though, don't forget to please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and click that like button. If you liked the, if you liked, yeah, if you liked. If you did like the video, <laughs> give it a like. And if you have like the series that are coming out and the content that's coming out, better to you because I'm doing this information to help as many people as I can. So the more likes I get, the more people get to see it, the more views I get, and the more comments and people sent to me asking me to do a video on this and that and whatever it may be. When it comes to just being able to activate the TBA, there's gonna be a couple of exercises that we're gonna hit. But just to show you what we're talking about now. Oh yeah, we're about to take off this goddamn sweater. What I want you to picture right now is if you were to take your belly button, imagine if someone was squeezing your love handles, your low back, and your belly button in together. And that's what the TVA is there for, to create stability within that core and to tighten up the spine. This doesn't change anything from what I talked about before, but just being able to connect it, it's gonna take a little bit of time and a lot of focus, right? A lot of times we just do mo like we just do movements, yet we're not really getting a nice mind-muscle connection, what you'll hear a lot of bodybuilders talk about when they're doing their exercises. Same thing applies. If we're trying to do a bench press, or should I say, let's say a fly, and if we're not feeling the proper connection of that muscular contraction, you're not really getting the bang for your buck for that exercise. Because just to do it without getting a nice, mind-muscle connection, you're not going to be able to activate all the muscle fibers, all the motor neurons that we want, so that's nah, not really going to work. So for TBA, we're really focusing right here on the belly button, really trying to imagine someone is taking this and squeezing it nice and tight. Now we're here, we're not trying to suck in, right? We're just trying to find, let's say, a midway between anterior and posterior, neutral. <sighs> Breathe normally. <sighs> and contract. It's gonna sound weird, but you almost gotta feel like you're squeezing your butthole and gooch and belly button together. Like you know when you wanna pee, or men, when you wanna kinda like, you know like, when you wanna do that thing, you know, with your penis, yeah, and women when you're really trying to like squeeze and hold in your pee, it's clearly, you shouldn't be doing that if you are, I'm not judging, but. Not my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. Somebody else's cup of tea. <laughs> Not mine. So, that's pretty much the focus that you're gonna want. And for these exercises, we're gonna start nice and slow and then progress it and challenge that stability that we have. So we're first gonna start with a really easy one. It's just gonna be laying down on the floor with your knees up. If you guys do want, you could put a pillow behind your neck. Sometimes it does help. I like to tell my clients to put their hands on their stomach where that belly button is and one on their chest and just to focus on squeezing, because a lot of times people try to tense up their neck and their core. So you really just, having the hand here to create a biofeedback mechanism to tell you to not to contract any of this and to really just focus on squeezing that core. You're gonna try to hold that for anywhere between five to 10, ten seconds and you're gonna be able to, and you're gonna wanna be able to breathe at the same time, right? Being able to hold that contraction while breathing is gonna give us the best crossover when it comes to us doing exercises because that's what we want so once that becomes easy for you guys now you're going to stay in that position you're going to keep your at your arms nice and up out in front of you you're going to retract your scaps you're going to depress them down so you're nice and neutral you're going to hold that position and then we're going to try to challenge that by lifting our arms up imagine we're on the 
as you can see in the video, we're down on the floor and we're trying to challenge that movement. So we're trying to create that stability while moving our limbs. Once that becomes easy, we're gonna go into a dead bug position and we're just gonna hold. So it's pretty much like a quadruped position, but upside down as if like a dog was like, you know, begging for treats. That's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna work on the hold. Same thing applies. You're gonna to try to work for five to 10 seconds of a hold. And you do that for anywhere between six to 10 reps. Start with two sets of six to 10 and work your way up to three sets. And then after that, we're gonna challenge that movement and we're gonna start moving our body. So you can either start moving one at a time and just focus there, or you do these things called around the world. So as you're seeing me do in this exercise, we're holding the position and we're just moving one limb at a time. So we start with the arm, then we go to the other arm, then we're gonna move the leg, and then we're gonna move the other leg. You see in the exercise, I'm trying not to do the movement quickly. I'm trying to get that connection between me and my TVA and the contraction, and then slowly moving the limb so that I'm making sure that I'm not just doing it and breaking posture or contraction there. Once that becomes easier, we're gonna to try to challenge that even more and we're gonna do opposite. So you're gonna move your right arm up and you're gonna extend your left leg out. Same thing applies. This one you can either rep out, you guys can actually hold it at the end and hold and hold and hold and then come back and then repeat that. Again, working with concentric, eccentric and isometric holds is gonna be the best. Once that becomes easy, you're gonna go down and we're gonna make this even more challenging and we're gonna go into a hollow hold. Now, a lot of cheerleaders do this. I did this <laughs> a long time ago and then I also did it in cheerleading. So it's kind of a deg bug, but a harder version, right? We're putting a lever system now. So me, I'm 6'6", six, six. my legs are coming completely out, my arms are coming completely out. We're gonna lift up a little bit and we're gonna contract that card and we're just gonna hold it. And then we're gonna try to breathe. Being able to breathe is really what we want here and being able to hold and not break form. So that's gonna be one. Once that becomes easier, we're gonna start challenging the movement even more by moving our legs. So you either can do scissor kicks, you either can do flutter kicks, whatever it may be. That's what it's gonna challenge the movement. These are all little exercises that you guys can do and also implement into the other core isometric workouts that I put with this video and as well with the ab workout progression just to allow you guys to get the fundamental basics of leg raise, of a V up and of a ab crunch, right? When you put all of these into a properly designed workout plan and that you guys are actually doing yourself to take charge on the instabilities that you have, you guys are gonna see a huge crossover rate when it comes to just overall day-to-day -day activities, overall posture, and then as well, the big crossover rate when it comes to you performing in the gym for the activity that you guys are doing. Besides that, I hope it was helpful. I hope this answers the question that some of you may have been asking me. And if you do have any other questions, put them down below in the comments below. I love to hear what you guys have to say, what you want to know more of. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's your boy, that's it, Zach. Punch, headbutt, elbow, double knee, and feet. That was so weird, peace.